In April of 2012, a group of us took a trip to St. Martin, a Dutch and French explored island that is located on the border of the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, southeast of the Virgin Islands. During this trip, we explored several scuba diving sites located on the southeast end of the Dutch side of the island. During our visit, we signed up with a local dive outfit, Ocean Explorers, to do a controversial trip in 60 feet of water to witness the hand feeding of Caribbean reef sharks, which are indigenous to this part of the world. The reason a trip like this is controversial is that many authorities argue that the hand feeding of such a species promotes human tolerance and shark behavior and may cause these creatures to become comfortable around humans, which could ultimately lead to increased attacks in swimmers. There, however, has been no evidence that is consistent that shark feeding promotes such attacks. Banned in most parts of the Caribbean, others argue that these activities promote shark awareness, which helps defame the myth that the common shark is a cold-blooded killer among humans, as well as helps boost local economic growth to the scuba diving operators. Ocean Explorers is one of two outfits on the island that is sanctioned by the government of St. Martin to conduct this activity. Please understand that this amazing dive is led and conducted by professionals and should not be done without such assistance. Today our guides will be Dive Master Jeff, who is handling the sharks, and Dive Master Kaylee, who is assisting and taking photos. Videographer Adam Dorfman will be manning the HD camera, and Diver Jeremy Fishinger will be assisting. I am your host, Dive Master Leeds Butcher. Welcome to our Shark Awareness Dive. The Caribbean reef shark is one of about 500 species of sharks to roam the world's oceans. This particular species posts very little threat to humans, as you are about to see. Sharks in general are at the apex of the food chain, meaning they are at the top. Sharks are responsible for maintaining the balance of the coral reefs and shallow dwellings around the world by consuming the sick, diseased, and the old creatures that occupy the reef. They are also responsible for maintaining the food chain balance by consuming invasive species that may overfeed on the bottom and the middle of the food chain. Sharks, unlike most fish, have a very low metabolism, meaning they conserve great amounts of energy throughout the day to conserve how much they must feed on a regular basis. For example, a normal fish may consume 100% of its body weight in a day, where a shark will only consume about 3%. This allows the shark to maintain their food supply in a very balanced way. 150 million years of evolution has produced this perfect ambassador of the sea. Sharks also boast very long gestation periods. Generally, sharks may carry young called pups in the womb for as long as 24 months. A typical female may only give birth to one to eight pups at a time and only breed every other cycle. Also, sharks must be fully mature to breed. Unlike humans and some other mammal counterparts, a shark must reach well into its maturity to handle the burden of reproduction. In some species, 20 years old would become the first time breeding would occur. This makes it difficult and impossible for sharks to recover from the 38 million taken out of the ocean each year by the commercial fishing industry. 38 million, think about that for a minute. Within the last century, the shark population has declined up to 80% of where it was just 100 years ago. Overfishing and lack of understanding the importance of sharks by human beings is the main cause of the decline. In parts of Asia, sharks are hunted simply for their fins and the carcasses are tossed back into the ocean for sharks to die in pain and torment 
to merely produce shark fin soup, a delicacy in that part of the world. In other parts of the world, such as the United States, mako, black tips, and thrasher sharks are served as steaks in seafood restaurants. Spiny dogfish sharks are popular in Northern Europe, served as a popular dish called fish and chips. Shockingly, the United States ranks higher in shark consumption than the country of Japan. However, recently, the United States has passed and is still working on several bills to limit the amount of sharks that come from its waters. The problem we face is not fishing, but overfishing and the disregard for healthy populations that serve to keep our oceans in balance. Perhaps the reason we have had such little regard for these creatures is the misconception that they are killers of humans. This could not be more far from the truth. In 2010, there were 79 shark attacks worldwide on humans in the ocean. Of those 79, only six were fatal. Three main species that are considered man-eaters are the bull sharks, the tiger sharks, and the great white sharks. In most cases, a shark bites a human because it thinks it is food. When it releases its jaws, it goes away because it realizes we are not food. Unfortunately, the bite from a shark can be devastating to our bodies. We must remember, we are not food because our primate ancestors had not even evolved when sharks began patrolling the waters. We must also remember that the ocean is where they live, and we are in their home. They are not in ours. <laughs> to put it all in perspective, you have more of a chance of winning a Nobel Prize, being hit in the head by a falling coconut or an airplane, or winning an Academy Award than you do being bitten by a shark when swimming at the beach. You may notice small fish swimming with the sharks. These fish are known as the Remora fish. A Remora fish is a fish that shares a symbiotic relationship with the shark. The Remora keeps the shark clean of parasites while benefits from the shark's protection against predators. We hope you have enjoyed this wonderful film of these amazing creatures. Perhaps it has inspired you, perhaps it hasn't. With any luck, it has at the very least opened your eyes to the fact that our friends in the little gray suits, as Big Mike from Saber Deep Dive Center likes to call them, need our help and protection. Why do they need our help and protection, you ask? Because they have helped and protected us and all the species of this planet by keeping the ocean in balance for the last 150 million years. And they have done so on their own without even as much back from us as a thank you.